Well, good to be here on um, Wednesday morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Of course, it's uh, match day for, um, for England, uh, so more excitement and no doubt stress and drama and trauma for all of us, or at least some of us to go through, you might not care. Uh, but uh, yeah, some of us have a little bit of a trauma to get through today. Uh, anyway, don't pray for football results. Um, so we won't be including that in our um, morning prayer today. And we're not, comm we're not commemorating or celebrating anyone, anything, especially today in the lectionary. Um, but we are asked in the Diocese of Bath and Wells to pray for the relay of the Young Christian Climate Network um, as they make a journey from um, Carbis Bay to Glasgow. Now, I'm not sure where Carbis Bay is, but I'm assuming it's not very close to Glasgow as they're travelling. Uh, anyway, so we'll pray for them today and we'll be hearing words from Psalm 111 and um, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. So let's take a moment of quiet as always as we collect ourselves together in the presence of God and in at the beginning of this new day and yeah. O oh Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. Lord our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So to our psalm, which is, of course, Nelson's Psalm 111. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll read it through. And as always, if you want to join in, absolutely fine. And um, if you just want to listen and let the words speak to you, that's also absolutely fine. Alleluia. I will give thanks to, <clears throat> to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed the people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Pray a song, a psalm of 
praise, a song of praise. Psalms were originally songs, of course. Many of them are uh, psalms of lament, but uh, for this one today, it's a psalm of, of praise. Perhaps an opportunity for us to call to mind those blessings that God has given to us. We turn now to our second reading from the New Testament, from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, at chapter 2, verse 5. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So, now, instead, you should forgive and console him so that he may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason, to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. When we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. When I came to Troas to proclaim the good news of Christ, a door was opened for me in the Lord. But my mind could not rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said farewell to them and went on to Macedonia. Thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. For We are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one a fragrance from death to death, but the other a fragrance from life to life, who is sufficient for these things. For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many, but in Christ we speak as persons of, of sincerity, as persons sent from God and in standing in his presence. <clears throat> we are the aroma of Christ. Quite a responsibility. Maybe we could reflect upon what that means for us to be the aroma, the fragrance of, of Christ in the world to those around us. Do we bring a, an attractive aroma, fragrance, or the opposite? Well, Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory, for I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Well, let's turn to our prayers of intercession as we reflect upon God's word. And we pray for the world, the church and the day ahead. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. The psalmist offers you praise and gives you thanks for your promises and your faithfulness. So we thank you for the blessings that you grant to us. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us. Whilst we acknowledge the challenges and the hardships that our world faces, that we indeed face individually ourselves, as we all do, so we give you thanks for all the good that you grant to us, remembering that everything we receive from you is a gift of grace. Our life itself is a gift from you. So, Lord, we give you thanks that you are a faithful and wonderful God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for Paul's 
words for the reminder that we are the aroma of Christ. We are the presence, uh, the, the, the fragrance of Christ in the world. We thank you for that joy and that responsibility. Lord, we pray for the witness of the church, for us here in the benefits of Staple Grove and Norton Fitzwarren, as we seek to shine the light of your presence here in our communities. So we pray that that fragrance, that aroma will be an attractive one, one which does indeed represent fairly and faithfully your nature and your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we pray for the church, so we, we pray for our diocese, recognising the challenges that we face at the moment centrally, as we work through a, a vacancy in the bishop. We pray for Archdeacon Simon as he leads the process to identify his successor. Lord, we do continue to pray for Bishop Ruth as she leads us in our mission and ministry, that you would sustain her with the additional responsibility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the relay of Young Christian Climate Network as they travel across the diocese on their journey from Carbis Bay to Glasgow. May their witness for a just future be welcomed as they pull a symbolic boat and meet people throughout this month. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do pray for the world particularly those areas of our own community and the global community who suffer. We bring before you the vulnerable, the lost and the last and the least, especially those locally who are still uh, clearing up and suffering from the effects of the flooding on Saturday. Lord, we're, we're thankful that largely that's passed, but we recognise still that there are some people who are still finding life difficult. We thank you for the community response through uh, social media. We thank you for the gift of social media, so often, of course, a, a curse, but on this occasion, uh, a real blessing. And Lord, we do pray for those who are experiencing poverty, the poverty of any kind, whether that be financial or material, or indeed poverty of relationships and human contact. For those suffering mental health issues, uh, whether connected to lockdown and the pandemic or otherwise, Lord, we do pray again for our health service. We thank you for our doctor's surgeries, the two uh, within our own uh, benefits, pharmacies, and for Musgrove Hospital. Thank you for the chaplaincy work done there. We pray for all who support the health service in any ways, recognising the pressure that they're still under the increased pressure that will come their way when restrictions ease. Lord, we pray that they will be provided for and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we pray rightly for those who care, so we bring before you those we know who are suffering whether that be through illness or whether it be through 
anxiety, just the challenges of life. Lord, we continue to pray for the Kirsham family as they approach a wedding on Friday amid considerable uncertainty and challenges. Lord, we pray for all in a similar position at the moment, maybe facing significant occasions. Weddings, funerals, christenings and other life events. We include within that, of course, our schools with bubbles closing and opening and so on and so forth. And we do recognise the challenge that that faces, that that, that that brings to individual lives in a very real way. So we call to mind now those individuals known to us who suffer. And we ask that you would grant peace and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do pray for the day that lies ahead of us now. The meeting this morning of the Ethos Group, at Norton School. Thank you for the way in which school and church work together once again recognising the challenges of this extraordinary time, but looking too ahead at the opening of new possibilities and asking that your Holy Spirit will lead us in those. So do pray that you would bless that time together. We pray for the PCC meeting this evening at St John's, having brought it forward, of course, to uh, be able to watch the football. Lord, we do pray that you would watch over that meeting, that you would bless us together. Thank you for the agenda that we have, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us throughout. And in all the other activities of the day, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us, that we will be faithful and obedient to your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So to our collect for today, almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour Jesus has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I hope you have a good rest of the day and um, take care. And I look forward to seeing you again in due course.